All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make aircrete. Aircrete is a, a lightweight cellular concrete and it's a, a pretty new technology they've come out with in the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. People have started building with it and it's something that I'm pretty excited about. Today I'm also going to show you the Treadmixer 3000 in action. It's actually one of the main reasons I built it was for mixing aircrete. That's one of the reasons this uh, mixer is tilted up at a higher angle than you usually see on a uh, cement mixer because I mainly wanted it for getting the volume for mixing aircrete. Aircrete isn't very heavy. It's mixed with foam uh, with concrete and so it makes a very lightweight concrete that is easy to mold and uh, it works great for projects where you don't need the compressive strength of regular concrete. So I'm going to show you uh, how I make it. I've got my foam generator that I made out here and the foam wand and in a later video I'll show you how to make your own uh, foam generator for very cheap. Um, and today I'm using Drexel foam for the uh, foaming solution. I've tried some of the others uh, this is the one I found works the best. Uh, a lot of people use uh, different types of dish soap and things like that. This one makes the most consistent foam for me. i am actually got a couple more that I'm trying that uh, may be even better. And if I do figure those out, I will put it in another video and show you exactly which ones they are. Alright, so let's get to it. I'm going to show you how to make aircrete. And I'm going to pour it into some molds I made. I'm going to make a couple of uh, uh, garden boxes. So I'm going to show you how I made some forms and I'm going to pour it into it, level it off, and then we'll let it dry. And after it gets done, I'll show you uh, what that looks like. Okay. All right. So now I've got my concrete slurry mixed up and I'm uh, getting ready to uh, inject the foam from my uh, foam generator. And uh, you can see you want it to be uh, well hydrated and well mixed, nice and smooth and it's all ready for uh, foam to be injected into it. All right, so I want to talk about foam quality and density. So once you get a good foaming agent like the Drexel foam, um, one of the things to have consistency and one of the things that will eventually make aircrete a acceptable building material um, is consistency. So one of the things you need to do is measure your uh, pounds per cubic foot. So what you need to do is build a uh, measuring cup that you can put on a scale and measure. This is one that I've built. It is a one-tenth of a cubic foot uh, measuring cup. It's exactly the right depth and diameter. And that is uh, 6.112 inches in diameter and six inches um, across. It's just a piece of uh, six inch PVC. So the volume of it is exactly one-tenth of a cubic foot and that makes it much easier to measure and convert to pounds per cubic foot uh, density when we're talking about cellular concrete. This is how we measure it. So every time you do a batch of um, 
cellular concrete or aircrete, you need to measure it and make sure what you have. That way you know what density you're pouring each time. And if you need more foam or less foam, then we will um, go from there and adjust it by putting either more foam in or less, you know, with a little more concrete and a little um, more water. But it's better off just to have it lower and then add more foam. That way you bring it up to exactly where you want for your density. All right, I'm going to show you how I do that. I just have a little postal scale set up and I just set it down and I take a bucket of foam or a bucket of cellular concrete. Zero out the scale. And see what it weighs. So we are 3.08 pounds. So approximately, almost exactly three pounds. I'm a little, a little high on the amount, so I'm just going to call it three pounds. So if that's one tenth of a, a cubic foot, then right now we are uh, sitting at uh, 30 pounds per cubic foot because this is one tenth. So then you can have, and I'll put up a, I'll put up a uh, chart that shows exactly what the tensile strength and what the compression strength is of cellular concrete for each cubic foot for whatever density you're mixing. All right. Okay, so here's the table that I said I'd put up. It, this shows the um, pounds per cubic foot uh, as the density measurement, and this is what you want uh, to measure when you're measuring your completed air creep just before you pour. All right, so now we're going to transition to day two because uh, the aircrete uh, didn't mix very well on that first day. So I decided to uh, redesign my paddles that were inside the mixer. Uh, the other ones were just too small and they weren't mixing fast enough. So I welded on some uh, larger paddles inside the mixer and this is the second run and it made a huge difference. Uh, the aircrete mixed a lot more uniform. I was having a hard time uh, on the first batch there getting it to mix uniformly to the bottom of the mixer and this time it mixed amazing. So big improvement and that's why you see uh, we're in day two here. Okay so you can see if you uh, Look now at the way the air creates mixing with the new bigger paddles. Um, it's doing an amazing job. If you look earlier uh, in the first batch from the day before, uh, the air creek just wasn't mixing. Uh, the foam was staying on top and the cement product or Portland cement was staying in the bottom and they just didn't want to mix together because the paddles were just too small. Anyway, now it's, uh, now it's mixing nice. Uh, and uniform. It's making a nice creamy mix, which is what you want to see. You want to see that nice creamy, almost like a milkshake. Uh, you don't want to see big bubbles rising up to the surface, and so that's uh, this is exactly what you want to see.
Alright, so I've got it all screeded out, leveled in my uh, form, and I just wanted to give you a little close up here uh, after I poured uh, what the air crete looks like. I'll see if I can get down close so you can see. What you want is very tiny bubbles. If you have big bubbles rising up to the top, um, it means that your foam did not uh, form and hold the way you wanted. Um, good air crete needs to have really, really tiny bubbles. If I can zoom in, maybe. You can see that um, the bubbles are holding nice and tight. Um, what I'm going to do is put some plastic over this so that uh, because I live here in Arizona where it's really um, dry and hot, even right now in April, uh, this will dry too fast. So I'm going to put some plastic over it to slow down the drying process so that this will harden up evenly and not crack. Um, if you let it dry too quickly, aircrete definitely will crack. Um, so, this is what you want. I'll show you one of the other ones that I have. This is the other form. Um, what you don't want to see is come out in an hour and have you know it be an inch down. And that's one of the reasons you want these small uh, bubbles in the air creep. Um, and that's the other reason you want to use a very high quality foaming agent is because these bubbles are very important. They need to hold until the concrete can set. And if the bubbles collapse before the concrete sets, well then, you know, you just have uh, collapsed concrete. Plus you have larger bubbles because the small bubbles pop into larger bubbles and then they pop at the surface but even those larger bubbles down inside make for big air pockets which weakens uh, the concrete. The concrete, the Portland cement, is actually what gives it strength and um, if the air bubbles get too big well then you lose all of your structural uh, integrity. So anyway, uh, this is what it's supposed to look like and uh, I'm going to cover it up with some plastic and let it dry probably for about, uh, usually I let it dry for two days um, and that should be good. Alright guys, so that's it for uh, making aircrete. Um, this is the first, uh, actually it's the second time I've run the um, Treadmixer 3000. If you want to see the uh, video on how I made this mixer, I'll put a link in the bottom. I'll also put a link in how I made the uh, foam machine, the uh, foam uh, generator, and also one how to make the wand. So that's it pretty much for how to make aircrete and what you want to see when you get it in your forms and when it's in the mixer. Uh, you want it to be nice and creamy. Uh, you don't want a bunch of bubbles popping on the top. If you see that then you know you're going to have some really weak aircrete. You want it to be nice and uniform. So use a good quality foaming agent and you'll make good quality uh, air cream for your projects. So if you like this video, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Um, and if you have any questions about air Crete or the generator or the mixer or anything like that, leave your comments in the comment section and I'll answer them, your questions. And I, I hope you learned something from this. So go ahead and subscribe if you want. I'd appreciate it. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.